Hello, and thank you for watching. I'm Mark Florka, Bakerpedia Baker Influencer and Baked in Science podcast host. This is your Thursday Thought, and today I'd like to share with you about baking with enzymes. There is that uh, old expression, big things come in little packages. This is very true for enzymes. The essence of enzymes have been given to us in nature. Various plants and fruits produce enzymes. Very tiny amounts are extremely effective with a lot of impact. With sugars, we know that the O's, O-S-E, suffix is a chemical classifier for sugar, as in sucrose, dextrose, glucose, etc. With enzymes, the chemical classifier is A's, A-S-E. Most bakers have heard of amylase. Specifically in baking, we mostly use amylase as there are several different types. Alpha amylase is an enzyme that acts on amylopectin. This is a form of starch molecule in the carbohydrate family. The alpha amylase will reduce the long chain of carbons into shorter chains that become fermentable sugars. Amylase is also known as an amylolytic or starch degrading enzyme. Amylolytic, say that three times fast. We can see how this is important in baking. Alpha amylase is so powerful that very tiny amounts have a big impact. As an ingredient in the baking industry, it is commonly sold in diluted form of 5% concentration blended with starch or wheat. Usage level is typically 20 to 60 parts per million on flour. On 100 kilos of wheat flour, that is only between two to six gram of enzyme. This is not the sort of thing you would be measuring with a teaspoon. Many artisanal bakers make use of enzymes that are within other ingredients naturally. You see, Enzymes, like amylase, are produced by cereal seeds, like barley. When they begin to sprout or germinate, it is their job in nature to degrade the starch stored in the endosperm into energy for the plant to grow. In other words, reducing sugars. When barley is sprouted, it does this exceptionally well. We then dry it and grind it into a flour using only four 0.5% on flour weight can be enough to significantly increase fermentation. Enzymes like amylase are also used to help improve the shelf life of breads, so the crumbs stay soft longer. The enzymes react with the starch just enough in such a way to prevent the starch granules from easily recrystallizing. We know this is a general term of staling and starch retrogradation or retrogression. Inhibiting this process is known as retarding the starch retrogression. It cannot be stopped entirely without compromising the eating quality of the bread, and it can be slowed down or delayed. There are a lot of different enzymes out there occurring in nature, and some are produced through natural processes like fermenting. Each enzyme has its own specific application use or challenges. In pastry production, I had long been aware that pineapple cannot be used with gelatin or it will not set up. This is due to the enzyme bromelain, which is a proteolytic enzyme that acts on proteins. Gelatin is a protein collagen extracted from the animal bones or fish. I have never thought about this in baked goods or what effect it might have. If you heat the pineapple juice, you can destroy the enzyme for use in gelatin and other products with proteins. In cooking, some people like to attach pineapple rings to a ham for roasting. Usually out of convenience, canned pineapple is used, and this is okay. When the pineapple is canned, it is retorted, a process where the product is heated to destroy bacteria and micro or microorganisms to prevent spoilage. 
the enzymes are destroyed in this process too. If, however, one were to use fresh pineapple rings on a ham, the whole roast would fall apart by the time it is cooked through, as the bromelain enzyme will go to work and break down all the connective tissues in the ham. Recently, a friend of mine asked me about using pineapple juice in making a white bread. My first thought was the bromelain, and I suggested that the juice be cooked first. My friend wanted to see what might, op what might happen using fresh juice. I have no idea about the concentration of bromelain in pineapple juice, nor the exact effectiveness of the enzyme in use. I took a stab in the dark and suggested that I would not use more than 10% of the water in juice to begin with. Well, that was already a lot, it turns out. Pineapple juice um, is more than 80% water and about 14% sugar, plus salt, minerals, and vitamins. Assuming that one-tenth of 1%, one as in 0.1%, enzyme is contained in the juice, at 10% of the water in bread dough, it ends up being roughly 600 parts per million. My friend told me that the dough mixed and developed gluten well, but after one hour bulk fermentation, it could not be molded or shaped and was poured into the baking pan to bake. It still baked and had some interesting characteristics in that it browned more and it made for a very soft and moist crumb. He said his kids loved it toasted. <laughs> My friend is going to continue experimenting with 1% and 2% water replacement with pineapple juice to observe the kind of results obtained. Maybe we are on the verge of discovering another shelf life extension enzyme for the baker's toolbox. That fresh tasting croissant on planet Mars after a multi-year journey is getting closer to reality after all. Thank you for watching your Thursday Thought. I'm Mark Florka, Bakerpedia Baker Influencer and Baked in Science Podcast host. Make it a great Thursday. Bye for now.